Hi, my name is Claudia Mark. I'm one of the research fellows at the Neuroepidemiology Unit at the uh, University of Melbourne. I'm involved in a number of studies looking at the health behaviours and health outcomes of people with multiple sclerosis. One of them is the Holism study. This study we started in 2012 and we started recruiting people with MS from all over the world really to share um, their health behaviours and health outcomes related to MS. So what we were asking of people is to tell us what sort of health behaviours they engage in in everyday life, for instance exercise, um, smoking, whether they take any vitamin D or omega-3 supplements, um, sort of how stressed they are, or whether they meditate, um, and a range of other health behaviours um, such as diet for instance. Um, we look at whether there's changes in these health behaviours and how they are associated with health outcomes over time. So that's one of our main purposes of this, uh, of this study. So with the Holism study we um, collected data from about 2500 people from all over the world in 2012. So these people were mainly from North America, um, so the US and Canada, from Europe, from Australia and New Zealand. And um, we've published now 12 papers from this study and we're still publishing um, more papers um, looking at whether um, these health behaviours are associated with health outcomes. So for instance, um, what Karen has already talked about this week uh, in the depression for the depression paper is that healthy behaviours uh, decrease the chances of having depression and the same goes for a lot of other health outcomes for instance quality of life is one of our major health outcomes and um, disability progression um, fatigue and um, with the comorbidity paper I'll talk about a bit later which is about a range of other health problems So the most recent paper that we published from our holism study is the comorbidities paper and we published this in PLOS One. And uh, what this study really looks at is um, health problems that people with MS have other than MS. So one of the most common health problems that people with MS report uh, are for instance depression, anxiety, arthritis, um, high blood pressure. And um, what, we know, what we know about this is that it is sometimes related to underlying uh, pathology that is related to MS. It can also be side effects from medication that people with MS are taking. And what we were really interested in is whether it was related to um, healthy behaviours. So we know that people with MS more often have unhealthy behaviours than the general population. For instance, um, in terms of smoking and physical activity, um, people with MS are also more often overweight or obese than the general population. So we were really interested to see whether this was related to other health problems or comorbidities as they are called. The results of this study showed that with increasing BMI, so that's body mass index, um, there's also an increase in health problems. So when people start to get overweight or even obese, the number of health problems increase, especially uh, things like diabetes, um, high blood pressure, and also depression. In fact, the chances of getting depression or having reporting depression for people with obesity were two, more, than two point, more than two times higher than for people who didn't report obesity. So that's, one of a, that's an important outcome, I think, because it really affects people with MS. One of the other things that this study allowed us to do was to look at differences in a different um, areas in the world. So for instance, we looked at whether there were differences between people coming from North America, people from Europe and people from um, Australia and New Zealand in the number of health problems they report and also in obesity. And what we found was actually that people from North America were twice as likely to report that they were obese. And this was also associated with um, a lot more health problems. So people from North America reported um, a lot of health problems more often than people from Europe and uh, Australia and New Zealand. So this was one of the other important outcomes of this study. Okay, the results from this study also showed us that healthy behaviours were um, associated with better health outcomes in terms of health problems. So those who were non-smokers had healthy diets, who exercised frequently, um, had reported fewer health problems than people who didn't. And that's also important in terms of health outcomes. So we also saw that people who report more health problems 
um, had a higher chance of having a relapse in the last year, also had a higher chance of having um, worse disability, so the, there were more people that were, for instance, unable to walk unassisted, and they also reported lower um, physical and mental health quality of life. So from this comorbidity study, we found that two thirds of people with MS actually have another health issue that can really affect their life and their health outcomes. And I think it's really important um, to know for people with MS that they can do something about this and that it's likely that if you live a healthy life and you have healthy lifestyle behaviours, that you are less likely to be affected by other health problems and that it is quite important to make sure you have a healthy weight, you exercise frequently, you have a healthy diet, and if you are a smoker, to look at ways of, um, of stopping to smoke. One of the other studies that I've been involved in is following people who've gone to one of the MS retreats that Karen has talked about to see how their health outcomes are going over time. And we follow their um, health outcomes, but we also follow their um, healthy behaviours. So we try to see whether changes in these health behaviours are associated with changes in health outcomes. What we can see um, from following these people over time, so we follow them at the one year post retreat, at three years, at five years, and we've now even followed people 10 years after they've gone to a retreat, is their health related quality of life is really going up. So that's very promising results, I think, for people with MS to know that um, over time, your health related quality of life can actually increase. 